best thing about the program has been working at Raw because I want to get into the entertainment industry and working for a talent management company in Beverly Hills and Hollywood is the perfect opportunity. As an intern at Raw Asia Pacific, we do research on production companies around the world for business ventures and other investment opportunities. Well, LA is such a diverse city. It's not only a financial hub, but one of the entertainment capitals of the world. Working in Beverly Hills and walking down Rodeo Drive every day, it was like being in a movie. I grew up in China. I'm studying in Australia and now I'm in the States for this program. The best thing about the program is I have the opportunity to work for an entertainment company in Los Angeles, which is the place to be for entertainment. I think this has been a great opportunity for me to further expand my international understanding. We be believe it's a very good way of enriching the lives of the students involved as well as enhancing their career prospects and their understanding of the United States. I'm interning at Capella Capital. It's an investment bank in Santa Monica based by the beach. Living in LA has been exciting and the weather has been amazing. You cannot be in a better mood to get up and go to work at 6.30 in the morning. The highlight of my experience has been able to transition skills I've learned at university into a practical industry-based setting. The US work experience is absolutely outstanding for Australian students. This is the largest capital market in the world. We have been thrilled with the Australian students that we've had come here. Uh, these people, I have no doubt, someday will become CEOs and directors and managing directors or ambassadors or presidents. At first it was uh, very overwhelming. Uh, the sheer size of the place and the campus and the amount of students that go here and the difference between um, Australian and American cultures but um, as the program went on we I think we really immersed ourselves within the culture and got to know the other American students very well. One of the highlights would have to be uh, the guest lectures that we've had come in They're from the Anderson School of Management here at UCLA and industry experts. They've given us a completely new perspective on doing business in the US and how that differs from Australia the experience has made me more set on my career path. I really enjoyed working in the talent management sector of the entertainment industry and it, it made me realise that that's what I want to do. Recently when I was applying for a job I had the opportunity to speak about the program and it was definitely something that they were interested in. So I can truly say that it was the best thing that I've done while at university. Not only did it put me in good stead to get a job upon returning, but I've made friendships and mates that I'll hold dear for many years to come. Okay, hi everyone. Um, welcome to the LA and Washington DC placement program info session. Uh, can you guys hear me okay in the back? All good? Cool. So my name is Luika Bankson and I'm the admissions and marketing manager at the United States Study Center. So I'm based in Sydney and um, help make these programs available to you through the Perth US Asia Center. Um, that was just a brief video on our LA placement program and we have a student who will be joining us a little bit later to share about his experience on the Washington placement program so you can get a bit of um, an idea from a student point of view for both of the programs. Um, before I get started, I do want to introduce a couple of my colleagues that work here at the Perth US Asia Center um, because you will be coordinating with them a lot throughout this process of applying and um, coming onto the program. So in the front row here we have Janine, if you can give a wave. And so she helps run a lot of the um, communication with the students to the lead up of leaving for the US. And then we also have Fiona who helps with some of the events at the Perth US Asia Center. So you'll likely come into contact with both of them throughout this process. Um, before I dive in, I just want to get an idea of who's in the room. So how many of you are commerce students? Most of you, okay. And how many of you are arts students? Okay, so there's still a good number of you as well. Um, so I'll jump into some of the details of the program and then uh, we'll do some questions at the end, okay? Um, so I'll start by just briefly introducing the U.S. Study Center and the Perth U.S. Asia Center. How many of you are aware of the Perth U.S. Asia Center? Okay, so a few of you. Relatively new to the UWA campus. Um, I'll give you a bit of history of how these centers came to exist. Um, it was the U.S. Study Center was first established in 2006, and it was um, a whole initiative set up by Prime Minister John Howard at the time. And they did a survey across Australia about 
um, the understanding of the U.S. and they realized that there could be a better understanding of America in Australia. And so they established the U.S. Studies Center and um, held a competition, a nationwide competition, as to which university would host the U.S. Studies Center. So the University of Sydney won that competition and um, established the center in 2006. But we are a national center providing opportunities for students across Australia. So um, while we are hosted at Sydney Uni, it is our hope to expand into other universities. Um, it's a national center set up for postgraduate and undergraduate teaching, uh, academic research and think tanks, um, business uh, forums and events. Um, as well as policy analysis and commentary. So if you ever see a big issue related to the U.S. being debated on TV, often the academics and people commenting are coming from the U.S. Study Center in Sydney. Uh, we offered our first classes at the center in 2008 and our first study abroad program in 2011, which was the Washington, D.C. placement program. Um, in 2012, we established the Perth U.S. Asia Center, which was um, opened with the visit of the U.S. Secretary of State Hillary Clinton, as you can see in the photo above. Um, so she was there for the, the whole ceremony launching the Perth U.S. Asia Center. And the Perth U.S. Asia Center is a bit different in the sense that they'll, they look more at the Australia-U.S. Asia relation. And so they will be eventually having courses available on both the undergraduate and postgraduate level here at UWA. And so they're hosted here on the UWA campus. And through the Perth U.S. Asia Center, all of our programs are made available to you. So um, in addition to the LA and D.C. placement program, we also run study abroad programs over the winter break, one at UCLA for six weeks. And we just launched a new one in Shanghai, where you would study Sino-U.S. relations. So there's a lot of different opportunities to get involved. And I encourage you to keep up to date on the Perth U.S. Asia website and sign up for the newsletter and things like that so you don't miss um, these types of opportunities. So at this point, I was planning on introducing our student speaker to share with you. His name is Robbie, but he is actually working full time now and running from the office. So he's a bit late. So we'll jump into some of the program details. And then at the end, whenever he um, arrives, I'll have him come up and let you know a little bit about his time in DC earlier this year. So just to go over some of the benefits of the program, I think it's pretty obvious what, you are, what you're in for, but um, it's good to highlight it for you so you realize what you're signing up for. It's a great opportunity to not just study in the U.S., but you're getting to live there and be immersed in the culture and working in a workplace with Americans. And it's funny, you don't think that Australia and the U.S. are that different until you're placed in those environments and you realize that there are quite a lot of different ways that we approach situations. And so it's an um, interesting environment to be immersing yourself in. It is a group experience, so you get to go on the program with students from Sydney Uni as well, which is great. Um, past students have said how nice that is to meet students from other side of the continent um, and be able to visit each other. So that's a, a great uh, plus side of the program. And it is offered over the Australian summer holidays, so you do get to sort of advance your degree by earning credit points over that summer holiday. Um, and many students end up graduating early and getting into the workforce earlier um, as a result of that, which is great. Um, so it is linked to your at-home curriculum. You do get credit for this program towards your um, commerce or arts degree. Um, you gain some international work experience, which is really highly valued by employees um, or employers these days. So it helps you stand out when applying for roles um, upon graduation. And we provide full administrative and academic support. So um, that includes an academic that's on the ground with you throughout the program. And leading up to the program, we take care, help take care of your visas. We provide some in-depth pre-departure sessions and cultural training. And so um, all you really have to do is sign up and get accepted onto the program. And we take care of everything else to get you there. Just some brief um, bullet points of the program. It is a nine-week nine week program from the 4th of January to the 6th of March, 2015. You'll be studying at either UCLA in Los Angeles or the University of California Washington Center, which for short they call UCDC. 
So it's a University of California campus located in D.C. Um, so you'll be based at one of those campuses, depending on which program you're on. You'll earn 18 credit points towards your degrees. You'll get to participate in a professional placement. So we'll place you with a company to do an internship for those nine weeks. And we'll schedule a range of different extracurricular activities throughout your time. So that could mean a trip to Disneyland, or it could mean um, a reception with the Australian Consul General there based in D.C. or L.A. So there's a lot of different things that we arrange for you to help you really make the most of your time on the ground in the cities. For the units of study that you do while you're over there, at UCLA, you have two courses that you're required to take, so um, you don't get an option at UCLA. You get to take doing business in the U.S. and leadership communication strategies. So they're um, really great courses to help prepare you to um, go into the workforce and helps you get that experience giving presentations and learning about business um, in the U.S. At D.C., you get to choose from a list of approved units. So you get to choose two from the list that's on the website. And some of them I put up just to give you an example and an idea of the options available are international policy, Supreme Court, U.S. foreign policy. So as you can tell, D.C. is more focused to arts students, which is why it's only available to arts students, because it's a bit more policy or politically based. And then both programs are required to do the University of Sydney internship unit. So what happens is you'll cross enroll into this unit, which is run by the University of Sydney, and they send an academic to D.C. and an academic to L.A. that will teach that course while you're on the ground. And it's an internship unit that just helps you um, understand what you're learning throughout your internship. So you keep a reflective journal, and it forces you to kind of reflect on what you're learning through that experience without just, you know, running through it and not thinking about it at all. So there's a mini research project component to that and a presentation at the end, um, and that information you'll receive once being accepted onto the program. So in total, as I said before, you'll receive 18 credit points towards your degree. So the professional placements, you'll be in your internships Monday to Thursday from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m., and then you'll have class three to four nights a week, and they're usually 6.30 to 8.30 p.m. So it's quite a busy schedule. You have to be prepared for, um, you know, being quite busy all day, every day. But you do get Fridays off to then have a long weekend to study, but most students travel and explore the U.S., which is what we want you to be able to do. So um, some of the placements that we have in the past, I've kind of just listed some of the industries so you have an idea of what's available to you. Um, as mentioned before, D.C. is more politically focused, whereas uh, L.A. is a bit more business focused, which is why we have commerce and arts separated for that reason. Um, some examples of placements in D.C. include um, placements with members of Congress and senators on Capitol Hill. Um, we had placements with the Center for Strategic and International Studies. We had some placements with Rio Tinto last year. So a lot of different opportunities, and you can read about them all on the website. Um, in L.A., some examples include Capello Capital for finance, which you saw in the video, uh, MNC Saatchi for advertising. We had a student at Warner Brothers Pictures, Qantas, Sony, so a lot of different um, corporations that are involved in the program. So the requirements for being on the program, um, I've kind of divided it into D.C. and L.A. Um, as I mentioned before, you have to be enrolled in an arts degree, which includes combined degrees for, L or for D.C. Um, for L.A., you need to be enrolled in a business degree. Uh, for D.C., you have to have completed at least 48 credit points, um, and that can include this semester currently. So as long as you've completed 48 by the end of this semester, you're eligible to apply. Um, for L.A., you have to have completed at least 96. It's a bit more of a senior program in terms of the, um, com the academic component and um, some of the placements. And so we do want students that have had at least 96 credit points applying for that one. Uh, you have to be an undergraduate student. It's open to both local and international students. 
uh, you'll have to have a minimum credit average and, the er, and be able to demonstrate the potential to be an outstanding ambassador. Um, you'll be representing, representing UWA in the Perth U.S. Asia Center and the U.S. Study Center while you're over there. So it's important to make sure that you, um, you know, exemplify that in your application, that you're going to be a good representative um, that we're sending to the state. And a cultural understanding and awareness is also good to, to show in your application. Oh, and one other thing to note is that um, you are required to have 18 elective credit points available left in your degree um, so that you can get the credit for this program. That being said, if you don't have a full 18 credit points, there are other options. You could overload your degree. You could um, get at least 12 credit points or, or something like that. But it is your responsibility to check your degree progression before applying and understand how much room you have for that um, with your degree. So make sure you check with your faculties um, and make sure you know how much room you have for these programs, okay? Um, so in terms of the accommodation, in Washington, D.C., you live in the same building where the classes are offered. So uh, you'll be living in that UCDC building. It's all in one place. And it's a great spot, only about five blocks from the White House and directly across from the Australian Embassy. So you're in quite a good location for exploring the city. Uh, UCLA, you'll be living in apartments near to the campus and within walking distance of Westwood Village, which I have a photo of up there. It's on, the, on your left. Uh, so Westwood Village has a lot of... Um, little movie premieres there, and so it's quite a nice area to be, to be in, and there's lots of restaurants and things. They're both in really nice locations. Um, you'll be living in shared apartments. So there'll be two bedrooms and two bathrooms. Uh, you'll be living with another student in a bedroom, so you'll have your own beds, but shared in one bedroom, so it'll be two students per bedroom. And you will be mixed with some other students. So in D.C., there's a possibility to be living with other American students. In L.A., you'll be living in the same area as American students, but with just each other on the program. Um, great locations, as I said before, and uh, um, really nice spots to be exploring the city. So down to the cost of the program, it's broken up into three sort of sections. So this is the program package fee, which is the bulk of the fees. This covers everything, pretty much. So your tuition for the program, your accommodation for the whole nine weeks, your health insurance while you're over in the U.S., um, all sort of on-campus facilities, so access to, like, the gym on campus and things like that. Um, and then all of the pre-departure sessions and planning that we provide for you before you go over to the states, as well as the activities on the ground. So any activities we arrange for you, such as Disneyland or consulate receptions, will all be included in the program. So that fee covers all of that. Um, it is listed in U.S. dollars just because it changes so much, and so we'll convert it to Australian dollars the week before your final payments are due so that it's um, more accurate with the day of the um, exchange rate. Um, and I know a lot of people look at that and kind of freak out as, they, as soon as they see that number, but do make sure you look into all the available finance options because there are a lot out there. I know that the international office at UWA has scholarships for programs like this, and you can apply for those. Um, there is OS Help that is available, which is a loan that you can apply for through the international office, and I think you can apply for up to $6,500 um, through that loan scheme. So, and we also offer partial scholarships, which um, there's a spot on the application that you can fill out to be considered for those. So there are a lot of financial assistance options. Make sure you do your research and see what's available to you before um, dismissing this just because of price. Uh, the other parts of the program costs include the University of Sydney tuition fee. Now that chunk can be hexed, so um, that's why it's kind of listed separately. Um, and then we can provide further details on that once you've been accepted onto the program. And then the additional costs would be, of course, your flights to get to the States, and then fees to just um, live entertainment costs while you're on the ground. And I'm sure Robbie can help give you a bit of an idea of how much um, he had to save up to spend while he was living in D.C. So this is the list of some of the important dates. 
Um, it is very important that you can commit to these dates before applying for the program, so make sure that you um, look through this closely on the website and take note. So applications are now open, so you can go onto the website, and I'll show you in just a second, um, and start to apply, and they close next Friday. Um, we will be shortlisting to do interviews, and so we'll contact you on Monday the 25th, and then we'll be conducting interviews on the 26th and 27th. So just be aware of that and make sure you keep some time available um, to be invited for an interview on those days. We'll send official offers on the 12th of September, and then you'll have a week to confirm your, or accept your offer, um, and then pay a $1,000 deposit to accept your offer on the 19th of September. Um, then we'll have a few pre-departure sessions to get you ready to go, so we haven't set the exact dates of that yet, but we will be in the next couple of weeks. Just be aware of the weeks that those are going to be occurring and make sure you're around. I know that exams finish around November 22nd, and a lot of you tend to jet off to go home or go do something after your exams, so just know that we're having a final pre-departure the week just after exams. So um, if you are planning to apply for this and be serious about applying, um, just be aware of that so you don't plan any trips out of um, Perth that week. And it is important to note that this program does overlap with the first two weeks of semester one. Um, you can just, you just need to let your professors know that you're participating in this program, and it is your own responsibility to make sure that you stay caught up on the readings and the work. We've had students do this program in the past, and they've been um, fine at keeping on top of that and getting straight back into things when they arrive in Perth, so it is possible to do. So that's pretty much it, just covering um, the basics of the program. Your next steps would be to visit the websites, and all of this information and more is listed on the website, so you can read into it a bit more, think about it, and start to put together your application. Uh, these websites will also be listed on the Perth US Asia website, so you can go to their um, site as well and access this information. Um, read very carefully through the program conditions and guidelines. Um, it is important to understand what you're committing to and everything that's involved. Um, and there is an inquiry form on the website that you can enter in any questions and we'll get back to you um, as soon as we can. So I'll invite Robbie up now. He'll just give a bit of a testimonial to his time in DC and then we'll open it to questions and you can come and ask any questions. I'm going to come around this way so you can use this. Alrighty. Hey guys. Um, so as I said, my name's Robbie. I was lucky enough to be one of the students that went to DC uh, the summer just gone. Um, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time talking about my experiences, mainly because I'm sure you guys, I'm sure it's more helpful for you guys to actually just ask questions rather than me talk about what I did. But very briefly, I... Um, as I said, I was lucky enough to go to DC. I worked at the Center for American Progress while I was there, so I wasn't uh, on the Hill working for a senator or a congressman or a woman. I was um, working in a policy research think tank, um, which was right down my alley, because I'm an art student, I love politics, and so the Center for um, American Progress was a great fit for me, and the Perth US Asia Center and the US Study Center sort of uh, saw what my interests and my passions were and matched me up with something that was really not only useful for me, but something that I was really quite passionate about. So if you're worried that you're going to go away and get sent to this like random company that you've never heard of that's not really that useful to your degree, or you're going to go and work in somewhere that doesn't actually help your future career prospects, know that the Perth US Asia Center and the US Study Center actually really do take into account what you want to do after your degree and take into account what your passions are and really try and align you with what you want to do and what suits you the best. So I was lucky enough to work at the um, Center for American Progress and luckily for me that's led to a few jobs since I've been back as well, <laughs> which is always useful. So uh, essentially my work, my like regular day was sort of 9 till 6 work, Monday to Thursday. I'd come home uh, 6.30 to 8.30 or 9.30, I'd have a class and then just hang out with some people. So it's always a pretty full on day, but I think what you, so you've got to be aware that it's going to be a lot of work and it's going to be a lot of effort for a few months, but it's absolutely worth it. I enjoyed absolutely every single day I spent at the Center for American Progress. I was learning new things. They were sending me to 
different speeches and sending me to different events pretty much every single week. Um, they are always looking out for more opportunities to help their students, and especially the students that come from Australia, because we're a bit of a favorite, um, give them extra opportunities and all that sort of stuff. Uh, in so in terms of work, it's so rewarding. You learn so much, and it looks amazing on a resume. <laughs> um, in terms of what I did over the weekend, um, I ended up actually going to, obviously New York's like three hours away from DC and it's about a $25, $30 bus ride there. Um, and you can get accommodation for 15, 20 bucks a night. So it's a really cheap weekend away. So I ended up going to New York, I think two or three times throughout um, the couple of months that I was in DC. I know a few people um, were all coming from Australia, we were all really good friends and ended up, uh, before they left, booking different trips to different cities every weekend. And they sounded like they had a great time. They ended up going to Chicago, New Orleans, all these sort of places from DC. I wasn't nearly that organized, <laughs> so I didn't do any of that. But that actually worked out really well in my favor because I met some really great friends that had come from California or that had come from Michigan. And we ended up all going to New York together. And unfortunately, the people who had booked all their trips for the two months didn't actually get that opportunity to meet new people and go traveling with them. So if there's anything I can recommend, if you want to go traveling while you're over there as well, I wouldn't book it straight away. I would wait till you meet, just press something. I'd, I'd wait till you sort of meet some cool people and decide to go traveling with them. Um, and lastly, before I, I ask you guys questions, I guess, um, in terms of the cost, $8,500 plus flights looks like a lot, um, and it is, but it's really, really, really easy to work that down, um, as was alluded to before. So I was, first of all, lucky enough to get one of the um, scholarships from Perth US Asia Center, but also I managed to get $6,000 loan just put on my hex for future Robbie to deal with. Um, <laughs> I managed to get a scholarship from exchange office, which are really easy to get, and the arts faculty also funded me. So I ended up getting that $8,500 pretty much completely done. And then beyond that, I just wrote to a bunch of politicians and said, I'm working in policy, give me money to do this. And I ended up raising another like two grand just through politicians giving me like random bits of cash here and there as well. So it sounds like a lot of money. You probably need about 10 or so, including flights. Um, but it's really, really easy to work that down. So at the end of the day, other than what you get off all scholarship and stuff, maybe about two grand, which for a three month exchange, living in DC or um, LA, working, studying, meeting new people, and just experiencing what life is like in the US, it's completely worth two to three grand or whatever it will cost you. So if it looks like a lot of money, it is, but it's really easy to work that down. I'm just going to leave that there. If you have any questions about what I sort of got up to, I'm happy, happy to answer them. <laughs> Um, so I'll just make a couple more points and then that came to mind while I was standing there and then open the floor to questions for both myself and Robbie if you want to ask from a student point of view. Um, oh, now the points have slipped my mind. <laughs> oh, just a point about the interview process. So if you are invited to do the interview, there's also a writing assessment as part of that. So um, you'll be asked to do, uh, a, you'll be given a prompt and a question and have 30 minutes to provide a 300 word response. Um, don't stress over it, it's just a bit of a writing sample to have and you'll also do a one-on-one -on -one interview. So that's kind of that sort of assessment period that happens. Um, I had another point but it slipped me. So we'll open it to questions and if I think of it I'll, I'll mention it, okay? Go ahead. Is your, does your degree fall under the commerce school? Yeah, it's a management, the management side of things should fall uh, under commerce. It should be okay. Just yeah. make sure um, you'll want to speak with Tanil, who works okay. with the business school. I don't think she's here. No, she's not here. So you'll want to speak with Tanil just to make sure that that'll work with your degree. Um, all the information is on the website. So you can just go to, here, I'll go to that page again. Were you on it this morning? No, it's just on the phone right now. Okay, here, I'll show it to you now, yeah. just so you know how to work that. Um, so here's the LA page. Yeah. And over on this side are all the different, yeah, all the different links for the information we just talked about. Um, the other point I just remembered was if you have not registered online for the session, please make sure you jot your name and email down before you leave because we will be sending updates and reminders um, between now and when applications are due. So those are set up in the front for you to sign before you go. Um, so yeah, check with Tanil to make sure that that works with your degree. Anyone else?
Yeah. Yes, so this program is available every year. So if you're not eligible yet, or if you want to wait and think about it, you can always apply again next year. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's always the same date. So it will always be January to March for nine weeks. Mm -hmm. Good question. So um, it is something that we emphasize to not apply for the program with a company in mind because that's not how this works. You're not applying for a specific company. Um, we sit down once we've accepted all the students and we try to allocate you to placements that are best suited to what your interests are in. Um, we can't guarantee that if you're a finance student you're going to get a finance placement doing exactly what you want to do. Um, it's all dependent on your experience and qualifications and what the companies are looking for. So we try to find what's best suited to your interests, which we gather from your application and from your interviews. So we have quite a thorough process of keeping that information straight so we know what you're interested in. And then we'll start to send off the resumes to the companies that we think are best suited to your interests. And um, whoever will take that and agree to that will be who you end up working with. Any other questions? So last year we had nine students for LA and five for DC. Um, we're looking to hopefully increase it by a few in each city. Um, it's all dependent on the number and quality of applications that come in. Any other questions? So that's based on your WAM. So, go ahead. It'll be currently, because you'll have to upload your um, official transcripts with your application. So it'll be whatever's on your transcript up to this point. Sure. Um, so, okay, so I've got a whole lot of questions, so I might keep on talking. Just a little bit. <laughs> um, in terms of also, and this is probably more relevant to the people studying arts and more thinking about going to DC, obviously, because that's where my experience is. The amount of extra opportunities you get just by virtue of being in DC and having that experience is incredible. So a few of the things that I just did through either class, through my internship at the Center for American Progress, or things that the US Study Center set up for us to do were just incredible. So we had like a cocktail evening at the um, Australian Embassy. We met with the chief White House correspondent of the Washington Post. We met with Michelle Obama's chief speech writer. We toured the National Portrait Gallery. We went to, had a, like a private tour around Congress and the Senate. Um, the sort of things that you would be doing if you go to DC are absolutely incredible. It is obviously the most powerful city in the world. The most stuff, the most decisions get made there. You get to see where all the congressmen hang out in the dank little alleys, um, or like weird little bars where they have crazy deals around cigars, I don't know. You get to, really experience what being in DC is like and you really get to experience that sort of sense of power that you are around. Um, and obviously, as was said before, when you're living there, you're living in apartment blocks that are like literally in the middle of the city. If you've heard of DuPont Circle or anything like that, like that is exactly where we are staying, which is the middle of the city. Um, it's absolutely incredible. I cannot recommend this pro um, program highly enough. The experience you get the opportunities you get and where it leads, especially coming back home as well, is just all incredible. So if you are at all on the fence, I would apply. <laughs> um, and I might add that you are in the States during this whole event called Good Day USA, which is a big uh, series of events across the United States put together between US Australia government. So there's a lot of events in LA and DC that we get to loop you into because of our own involvement with Good Day USA. So um, forums and discussions and um, things like that that create great networking opportunities for future opportunities in the US. So any other questions? Okay, well, you're welcome to come down if you're too shy to raise your hand. I'll be hanging in the front, and so will Robbie. And if not, then good luck with your application. And send any questions through the online form.